right, let's get these pre-cals started. But before we start, folks, this episode, the special episode on Sleep Tech Appreciation Week is brought to you by React Health, formerly 3V Medical, leading provider of sleep, sleep diagnostic, and respiratory products. And we are so thankful and grateful for their support of us and the sleep community. With that being said, Robert, can you tell us what's on the docket today? Yes, yeah, so we've got an interesting case of a, a sleep tech turned consumer device, um, I guess, guru. Uh, if she, uh, I, I saw an article about a new product that's in development and, and, uh, or being released, something like that. And I, I just happened to reach out to Brianna to see if she would uh, be interested in coming to join us and talk a little bit about her world of moving from traditional sleep medicine into this consumer um, you know, electronic space, all still sleep related. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what she has to tell us. Um, and maybe she'll slip and tell us some secrets that she's not supposed to. I, I wonder if any of those secrets will be about uh, going in in that, uh, what's it called, that rocket, the blue something? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what though, it's what's cool though, as you think about her, we've had so many guests on, you know, from David Moore to others that have broken out of the stereotype of what sleep technology is. And I think I'm looking forward to hearing about her journey, especially, you know, from being a sleep tech to being a part of, you know, one of the biggest companies in the world. So I think this is a, it's a nice treat to hear someone else's journey and how they got there. Agreed. All right, folks, let's go on with the show. Welcome, everyone, once again to another fantastic episode of Sleep Tech Talk, the sleep podcast on this Sleep Tech Appreciation Week. Happy Sleep Tech Appreciation Week to each and every one of you with your hosts and friends, Robert Miller, Emerson Kerr, and me, Jerry George Moneycrow. We can't wait to tell you about what's going on today. But before we do that, we've got a special word from our sponsor, React Health. React Health, formerly 3B Medical, a leading provider of sleep, sleep diagnostic, and respiratory products. Their Luna G3 family of PAP devices are FDA approved, and they offer cellular modem standard in their CPAP, APAP, bi-level, and bi-level ST modes to treat a full range of sleep disordered breathing. Their magnet-free line of PAP masks include the Siesta Full Face, Siesta Nasal, and the Real 2 Nasal Pillows Mask, all of which have less than 1% refit rate. All right, night techs, keep that in mind, makes it a whole lot easier. And those of you who are working on the DME space, makes it so much easier. Visit them at reacthealth.com or contact your local React sales executive to learn more. Thank you so much, React. And Robert, over to you, sir, to tell us what's going on in today's episode. Hey, thanks, Jerry. We're uh, excited today to have Rihanna Lynch with us. She joins us. Um, Completely random. I just happened to be reading an article about a new consumer sleep product that's out there and uh, saw that there was a sleep tech who was involved in the, in the, in the project. So I, I wanted to reach out to her and, and try to get her to come onto the podcast. And, and here we are. So this is one of those episodes where we don't know her and she really doesn't know us. So we uh, are going to have to rely on her to tell us about herself and, and uh, how she got into sleep and, and what she's working on currently. So happy Sleep Tech Appreciation Week to all the folks listening, and uh, we appreciate your support. Hey. Yeah, yeah tell us a little <laughs> bit about your sleep. Yeah, um, well, once again, happy Sleep Tech Appreciation Week, um, especially for our night techs out there. Uh, I know those nights get uh, long. Um, yeah, so I uh, I fell into sleep like most people, right? Like most of us <laughs> weren't expecting to be sleep techs. Um, my simplest explanation is uh, I crashed an ambulance once and they didn't let me drive them anymore. <laughs> um, so I uh, became uh, interviewed at a sleep clinic at the ripe age of 19. 
Um, and I had a wonderful mentor named uh, Sherry Hansen. She's now uh, an ACE step director. Uh, and I have been rocking and rolling uh, ever since, at least, you know, in the, the, the simple terms of being a sleep tech. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your journey uh, in the sleep tech from night to day to where you are right now? Yeah, so I um, I worked as a night tech for the majority of my career, like when I was actually in the field. Um, and I kind of hit this identity crisis of sorts. So I was working as a night tech. Um, I just had my daughter. Um, and I think a lot of parents go through this, uh, especially sleep techs working nights. I think we all know someone that is a full-time parent and still a full-time sleep tech, um, which doesn't leave a whole lot of room for sleep. So I kind of um, put myself out there and uh, I kind of got on LinkedIn um, from the advice of my sisters who are actually, um, one of them's a, actually a product manager uh, in tech. So I got on LinkedIn um, and while I'm kind of, you know, I was actually working for ASM doing, uh, just doing HST setups, trying to keep things light because once again, I was kind of a, a new mom. Uh, and I just got a random message from a random person <laughs> um, for a company that doesn't even exist anymore. It was like a staffing company. Um, and all they said was, Amazon needs a sleep tech. <laughs> um, and I was like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I, they just said that's what they need. Um, so I, you know, didn't hear back for months. Um, and then you, went through a cup. Sorry. Did you think it was for nighttime deliveries? <laughs> you know, I thought everything from like maybe doing like compliance studies on their drivers like i had no i when i say i had no idea i had absolutely no idea because of course you know amazon's not just going to tell you know anybody whatever they're working on so i was clueless i didn't know if i was working nights i didn't know if i was working days i didn't know if i you know i did not know anything but i just kind of saw this opportunity and, you know, like I said, it was kind of in this really interesting spot in my life where I had spent my entire adult life being so devoted to sleep um, and so devoted to my patients. But then, you know, becoming a mom and trying to balance everything, I was like, I don't, you know, I kind of felt like not necessarily compassion fatigue, but I felt like I was getting there. And I felt like I wasn't doing my patients the justice I used to do it because there's only so many pieces of me I can spread. So I kind of just took this leap, had no idea um, what was going to happen, no idea what was what I was going to hear the first day I show up. So moved halfway across the country. I just have this idea that it's it's Jeff Bezos on the other end of the line going, I, I want you. Right. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it is it's interesting. Just, yeah, it, it's, you have no idea, you know, this huge company comes out of nowhere and they're just like, hey, by the way, uh, we see you do sleep studies and you have LinkedIn. So, <laughs> you know, and it's this massive company that has all the resources in the world. And you're like, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> yes. And, and, and Jeff is my hair twin, just for the record, for all the viewers. Who... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you both wear it really well. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I moved halfway across the country, not knowing uh, what the heck I was going to do. Mind you, I grew up in Sacramento, so I'm not too far from where I'm at now. I have family here, but still just no idea. Two years in tow and just like, uh, sometimes you take those opportunities and you go on a hope and a prayer and, you know, those opportunities can work out. Well, um, that sounds amazing. I mean, your, your story is so similar to ours where we, we took that leap of faith when you got to Amazon and you really got to be a part of this, when did you realize this is something special? I've really made a good decision and now I'm on a, an interesting track. Day one, 
It was day one. I, the people you work with, I always call, every time I walk through those doors, it's, it's so much surreal because I feel like, I feel like I'm working with everybody's high school valedictorian because everyone is just so dang smart. And I'm like, still sometimes I have to pinch myself, like, why y'all let me in here? <laughs> but, um, and the, the amount of respect uh, they have for my knowledge as a sleep tech. Um, and the way I was, you know, I'm able to contribute, you know, just the, the knowledge I've earned from being a sleep tech and like, even just the kind of the silly things you learn, you know, whether it's even just explaining Prozac eyes to someone, you know, all of these, you know, wonderful, smart engineers are just like, they will just, you know, soak it in and they're so appreciative of it. And that was like day one, like first meeting, like correcting the definition of a hypopnea. Like it was just, um, it was great, but it was a lot of work um, because I was the only, I am still the only one of my kind. Um, so I kind of, you know, I was, I, I've done a couple other things, um, but, you know, I was kind of brought in and like, imagine just, and I'm sure this may have happened to you guys, given like a, imagine give, being given like a big tote of supplies that people think sleep techs use <laughs> and being told, okay, <laughs> so I think this is cool. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, um, and I had to grow and learn this, like, I know the sleep part, but I also had to become kind of my own because my, you know, my job is I'm not just a sleep tech. I am a project, project and program manager. So I still, and still that part, like I am not, I'm not as knowledgeable in, um, you know, I can, I can, you know, score a sleep study any day of the week. <laughs> uh, but I kind of owned this entire kind of data collection process. Uh, at one point I was just end to end. It was just all me. So all of anything that any sleep information we needed came from me and you know down to figuring out where the heck we were gonna get it i mean all of that the entire process came from me so i had to like formalize a protocol but it can't be a protocol that you would use in a clinic <laughs> you know it's a little bit different um and we have our own you know kind of stakeholders to think about um so it, it had been a really a really long road um, to get up to a point where, you know, I, I got to be on this amazing team that launched a product. Um, but I, uh, I've grown so much, but there's so much more <laughs> growth to be had. Um, and I think, you know, kind of moving uh, into what I see the future looking like, I being on this project and being in this program and being in consumer sleep, there is a place for sleep techs that I don't think we've recognized yet. And I, and I'm just starting to recognize it and we're still, you know, chiseling our way in. Um, but, you know, a consumer sleep device comes out, let's just say an Apple watch or a Fitbit or the Garmin. Um, we always see a sleep, you know, we always see sleep doc on it, right? Well, we see a quote from a sleep doctor. Or we see something, you know, just kind of this, oh, you know, uh, and yes, they had some sort of involvement, but, you know, like a person that's going to actually know the customer, like who knows people that want to know more about their sleep than sleep techs, <laughs> you know, go ahead. No, uh, Brianna, so it's very interesting you said that uh, about the value of the sleep tech in this in this tech uh, tech space. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the accomplishments you've talked about growing so much in this time, with Amazon? Any anything that you could share with us? How you've grown and what you've grown? The accomplishments along the way. Yeah. So I think um, I think. Like one, one, I think accomplishment is being able 
um, to kind of be in the weeds uh, and provide, have that visibility as a sleep tech. So we can look at a sleep study and say, you know what? Don't feed the algorithm with this. This looks terrible. Um, and that kind of understanding, that kind of granular um, understanding and being able to like consistently contribute um, that and I think that is a huge accomplishment in my um, my opinion because we are finally you know at least I know with this product that I did we like we finally have control over where where the heck you know a device is is getting data from <laughs> like you know I remember when Fitbits came out I just assumed it was an actograph like I didn't know that it was, you know, I, that, that's what I assumed. Like I, so we have like putting confidence back into what goes into making an algorithm that can actually track your sleep. Any suggestions on uh, for other technologists out there that are looking for doing this sort of a job? What would you encourage them or any, any uh, advice they should do? I think the, the biggest one is put yourself out there and um, it's, you know, the, these, you know, this isn't a job that's just kind of laid out. You're not going to see it if you search LinkedIn, for instance. Um, but I think looking for keywords, looking for sleep and looking, you know, looking for data collection and looking for words that are more tech minded and not so much, uh, like clinic minded um, is going to be helpful. But at this point where we are, we're going to have to market ourselves. Um, we have to show that we provide this value. Um, and I think we have it in our mind that, you know, don't apply for something because we don't meet every little criteria. Like there is, you know, there's definitely room, obviously, all companies hire differently. Um, but I think having a really good resume and um, being active on LinkedIn is really going to be the best way to, you know, break into this career. Um, that is so awesome, Brianna. Thank you so much. And I want to ask you a few more questions, but we are out of time. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, can be, you said about LinkedIn, can people find you on LinkedIn? Yes, yes, you can absolutely find me on LinkedIn. All right. Um, be sure to look up Brianna Lynch, RPSGT on LinkedIn, and uh, make your connection right there and get your process started. Thank uh, you. Thank you. And we want to say thank you all out there, all our viewers and our listeners. Thank you so much for joining us once again uh, with your friends, Robert Emerson and me, Jerry. We say thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all sleep techs out there. And until next time, we say cheers and lights on. All right, time for some post cows. Before we start, though, sorry, guys, we had to have a little laugh before. As you all know, this is what we do in between takes. But hey, uh, this episode during this special Sleep Tech Appreciation Week is brought to you by React Health. Formerly 3B Medical, a leading provider of sleep, sleep diagnostic, and respiratory products. Their Luna 3G family of PAP devices are FDA approved and offer cellular modem standard in CPAP, APAP, bi-level, and bi-level ST modes to treat a full range of sleep disorder breathing. The magnet-free line of PAP masks includes Siesta Full Face, Siesta Nasal, Rio 2 Nasal Pillow Mask, all of which have less than 1% of refit rate. Be sure to visit our friends and sponsors, your friends and sponsors, reacthealth.com, or contact your local React sales executive to learn more. We thank React for sponsoring us and doing more for the sleep community. All right, guys, what do you guys think? Wow, you know, just like we, we were wondering in the beginning, you know, hearing someone's journey like that from, sleep tech to being a part of this consumer, you know, uh, wearable journey. That's fantastic. You know, she's got tons of passion, tons of energy, and it was so much fun to get to hear about her story.
I, I agree. I mean, uh, Robert, I, when we were, after we cut, you were telling her you wanted to ask a few more things. What, what were you curious about? Well, you know, the, the world of, of consumer sleep um, equipment has not quite crossed over, you know, to, to clinical grade just right. yet. Right. You know, so, so that's, that seems to be, and, and then, and then you, you have to come up with, then how do you monetize it when it, when it does make that crossover, you know, right. to keep everyone engaged and, and enough financing to, you know, produce enough, um, I guess, infrastructure to support a patient through their journey if they're going to be somehow diagnosed in the future with some kind of consumer device. So that's where I was going to go, but, uh, we didn't quite get there, you know, but my goodness, what a ton of energy Brianna brought to the conversation. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm exhausted already from, uh, from the conversation. She does, she has lots of energy and, and man, she was a lot Very of fun to have on the show today. Yeah, yeah. I, I could see her really illuminating the room when she gets, goes to Amazon and works with all those executives over there and brings a good, uh, spotlight and name to a sleep techs in, in such a consumer driven industry. So that was really cool for me, at least to see. No, I agree with you. She, the fact that she's able to represent all of us in those conversations where so many might, might expect it should be a physician. And, you know, as we all know, at being sleep techs, there's things that we see that sometimes a physician, the sleep doctor just doesn't get to see and maybe right. even overlooks and <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, thank you, Robert, for bringing us there. But, you know, I think that's a, that's a piece of this. Make the face. <laughs> you got to have billions in your pocket. There you, there you go. There you go. There you go. All right. For Sorry, those who can't see I, this, I interrupted you. We've got a great exactly. image going. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who are listening on the podcast, you have to switch over to YouTube and see what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> It's excellent. All right, uh, I think we've got to we've got to shut it down. Uh, Emerson, did you want to complete that thought? No, I just I'm just glad that that we that we continue to see whether it's what we saw with Inspire, what we're seeing with Amazon, that sleep technologists are at the table. And you know, there there's a statement I've shared at so many meetings now that you know if you're not invited to the table, you have to create your own table. And in this situation. <laughs> You know, we're seeing our sleep techs get to the table and be a, a vocal part of the journey in sleep medicine and sleep technology. And that's just fantastic. Can't agree more. All right, folks, I think that's a great point to, to end on for a change. So thank you, Emerson. And uh, until next time, be sure to stay tuned for the next episode. Take care and cheers.